And so the prophet says, you think it likely, I do not love you, my child. So I'm shaking and crying and, and, um, and at that point, I don't, I didn't think God loved me. I really didn't, you know, my life had always been hard. It had been a struggle. Um, my mom just, it was such a struggle. So he said, you think it likely I do not love you, my child? And he said, something happened and you were at the point of almost giving up. Don't give up. Keep relying on God. And he said, um, God honors your humble, contrite heart. And he said, there's a woman you must forgive. And I was like, huh, who is that? Because... It, it was either my mom or my aunt, you know, I didn't know which one it was. And I guess my heart had been so hardened that I had hate in there for, for more than one person and didn't even know it. So, um, the devil really, he blinds us guys. Um, if, if, if we do have unforgiveness, we've got to get rid of it. It kind of, it annuls the, the work of the cross. So if we don't forgive our brother, um, there's a scripture in Matthew, it talks about if you have an offense against your brother, leave your gift at the altar and then go and make, make amends with your brother and then come back and bring your gift. So unforgiveness hinders our prayers, hinders everything, everything. It just, it stops God from moving in our life. It stops God from delivering us, setting us free healing us, all of that, okay? So, um, there's a woman you must forgive. Um, forgive everyone for everything, no matter what, okay? And then he said, um, God's, you had dreams as a little girl. God's going to give you those desires to seek him first, okay? And then he said, remember, um, remember to always forgive everyone, woman and man, whoever, God's healed your body and your mind of any diseases. And he's anointed your hands for healing and your head for the glory of God. You will help others be in ministry and have your own business. And God released a double portion of his Holy Spirit on you. And so we got we got done. And the, the, the love I felt from just getting that word, um, I couldn't really remember it all at the moment the girls when we got back to the dorms they were like go and write it down here use the computer so I typed it out so so this is it this is from the prophet that um that gave me that word in 2010 it was actually uh 10 6 10 so and and I still got that piece of paper that's the only thing that I have from 12 years ago. Isn't that amazing? That's the only thing I have. So I do understand how God got this holy word put together by so many, such a diverse crowd over such a period, long period of time that staggers the imagination. You know that song, um, The Word is Alive by Casting Crowns. It's got a beautiful um, chapter in there that talks about how the word was just um, put together by tax collectors, prophets, uh, singers, uh, shepherds, and and it's just so beautiful. Well, the Holy Spirit did that, guys, and we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit above all things. We need Jesus's, God's Holy Spirit. God gave us Jesus. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit, okay? You used to be able to get into um, a prophet or um, the anointing could go on to Elijah, to Elijah, you know, like he could give his anointing to him. And really in the Old Testament, you don't see a lot of people with the Holy Spirit. Well, then there's a two verses. There's one in Joel, one in Acts that says... In those in the last days, God will be pouring out His Spirit on all men. 
Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Prophesy. Your old men will dream. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will see visions. Well, isn't that wonderful? We can all have the Holy Spirit. We can all have him. So the Bible says to seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and everything will be added unto you. So back to the subject of righteousness. Um, there's a scripture, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Because, you know, God didn't make me instantly perfect. It's been a struggle. Um, February to... February 2nd of 22, I was delivered from medical marijuana on a Zoom call with Daniel Adams. Um, I wasn't even the one called. I was in the tanning bed. Uh, Daniel Adams was praying for us as a, a group at the end of the Zoom conference call. Um, and, and I could just feel something leave. And... <clears throat> At that point, I did not know if it was cigarettes or if it was marijuana or if it was both because I've been expecting this whole microwave deliverance, like poof, everything's gone, I'm healed, set free, delivered, saved, nothing, no problems, only now I'm walking like Jesus, okay? That's how I've expected it to be, okay? No, that's not how it's been for me. It has been one thing at a time it has been I seek God with all my heart and all my soul I'm hungry I'm thirsty I want him and and he has been taken piece by piece and it transforming me and taking it away and and if I look there are things that still I want gone you know, but then I just look back at what he has taken and it's like, whoa, the woman I am now compared to the woman I was is like night and day. We are all, we, none of us are perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. Um, none is righteous, not one, Paul says. Um, so, so if we think we are standing tall, be careful not to fall, you know, that verse. So we've got to be careful guys, but we also need to be striving for perfection. So it's, it's been a war within myself. Uh, what do I do? So anyway, back to the thing, God took the medical marijuana. So over time he's took and uh delivered me from shooting up delivered me from alcohol delivered me from marijuana as soon as i left the tanning bed i'm driving home right uptown and there are six deer running beside the truck okay i know how noah felt when them deer and them animals started coming to the boat okay so I, I've been praying, God, show yourself to me. Show me. Show me your glory. Show me your power. Show me you. So then March, so I, I was smoking an ounce a week, okay, $100 a week. Gone. Gone. I think I did start um, tithing to Daniel Adams' ministry like a month or so prior to the, the deliverance, though. And I do think that that is a key, okay? I do think the seed, sowing seeds, is a big key because um, I tithe for three years straight, um, 10% to uh, elevation, to different churches, um, to a church that we went to in Tallahassee, to a church we went to here in Crawfordville, and um, and then whenever COVID hit, I complete I, I just started tithing to Elevation um, Stephen Furtick's church, and I don't think it matters. I mean, we need to be putting our tithes where the power of God is moving. Yes, that's true. But 
if we put our tithes in the wrong place, we are still, God sees everything, guys. He sees everything down to the, the look we make at people, just the haughty look. So he doesn't like a haughty look given to people. So if, if the Bible says that, then that tells me God knows what, what we're doing. So he honored me tithing. I'm going to tell you that because he has blessed our business, my husband's business, our business so well on um, we have been able, he has blessed us to be a blessing. He has blessed us to be able to start our ministry um, and have our business and, and go out and help others. I have time to go pray for people, go help people, study my word, stay in my scriptures. It is amazing. My life is like night and day. And I believe that faithfully tithing was a big part of that. Okay. And we have we have a tithe that's 10 percent we have an offering that's anything over a tithe and we have alms what we give to the poor so don't don't confuse um, giving to the poor with tithing and don't don't try to do things by works and all of that just be faithful tithe don't wait until you know you got enough and then tithe because that's not showing God your faith God is watching He's watching and he's waiting and faith is the currency of heaven and we need to all show God our faith. Every day is a test of our faith and a test of our heart every single day. So um, so the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. I'm going to read it out of the... Should I read it out of the kids? Uh, let's see. To some who were confident, their own righteousness looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you. I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like, like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get hmm. but the tax collector stood at the distance and he would not even look up to heaven he beat his breast and said God have mercy on me a sinner I tell you that this man rather than the other went home justified before God so God honors our sacrifices to God are a a humble contrite broken spirit a humble heart and a broken spirit are our sacrifices to God so I'm glad that that prophet um, told me that God honors my humble contrite heart um, that helped me to stay humble in a lot of situations. Um, I also, on my journey to getting the Holy Spirit, and that's what I'm going to call it because I couldn't do anything without the Holy Spirit. It has been so wonderful. And you do not have to be perfect to get the Holy Spirit, okay? So when the medical marijuana left, the Holy Spirit came, okay? How to get rid of the medical marijuana, I do believe that is one thing I had to get rid of. Now, I was still smoking cigarettes, but the Holy Spirit came, praise the Lord. And so I quit saying greens. We're, we're good luck on New Year's. I quit. I, I would just, when we'd eat Chinese food, I would just throw the, the, the little cookies and the fortune cookies in the garbage. And we used to open them. You know, but then I started like, I felt convicted about it. So I threw them in the garbage. So um, then, um, the deer ran beside the truck and everything. The medical marijuana left. And then I started feeling this like electricity whenever um, I'm sharing the gospel, whether it's on the phone, on social media or whatever. I just started feeling like this electricity and like God was telling me, you know, you're doing the right thing. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And it was like guiding me and leading me into all truth. And 
I just started being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and fighting him into my day, um, letting him lead and guide me into all truth, you know? So, um, so I quit, quit smoking medical marijuana on, in February. Then March comes and I told my husband February, I was like, something is in me. Something is bothering me. Something's in me. I don't know what it is, but it just still felt like I was struggling with something. And I started seeing people get delivered on, um, on YouTube from demons. And if you read your Bible, uh, demons are real. You know, Ephesians six twelve is one of the um, te one of the scriptures verses that I put in my testimony when I graduated Faith Farm, and they actually put it in a little book um, called "You Turn Wrong Ways Made Right" by Dean Webb, which has got like a lot of the graduates' testimonies in it, and it's a really good book if somebody's out there and in rehab or or wanting to get straight, get off drugs. Um, it's a good book and it and it's it's a Christian testimony, you know, and it's got Bible verses in it and it just kind of shares what what scriptures got us through, you know, through to our to our walk with God, you know, because it, after that I even messed up. I even had a time whenever I messed up after that. So <clears throat> praise the Lord. I know what it was now. It was demons. They were in me. So, um, we, Catherine Crick, we heard she was coming to, um, <clears throat> to Knoxville, Tennessee, um, March 24th. I told my husband, I was like, we've got to go. It's like an eight, 10 hour drive. Um, <clears throat> so we, we go. Boy, the devil did not want us going. He fought us the whole way. Um, my husband had calls coming in from work and he was driving and we were on a like a eight lane road and it was 